This is Phil Morrish. Let's speak to Phil. He's a weather expert on all of this. Uh, Rachel reporting on uh, Storm Dudley, which has uh, come in and, uh, and now gone. What about this one, Eunice? When is it expected to strike and where? Eunice is going to come tomorrow morning and she's going to be one of the most important and powerful storm we've had for many years. Now, she's developing in the middle of the Atlantic at the moment and she's caught herself upon the jet stream and she's shooting across the Atlantic uh, many miles an hour and she's going to be with us tomorrow morning. Now, Eunice is much further south than Dudley has been and Eunice is very, very powerful indeed. Now, tomorrow, this could be the most powerful storm we've had for 32 years since the Burns Day storm in 1990, which did a tremendous amount of damage. And it's that rare a storm. If this storm is going to affect southern England and uh, Wales and northern England up within up to 90 to 100 miles an hour. Even where I live in the Midlands, we could have winds up to 80 miles an hour. That's almost unheard of. The strength of the wind, you're only talking about four or five gales in the last hundred years have been this strong. And of course, all the problems that's going to cause. She's going to arrive tomorrow in the dawn. She's going to cross, looks like at the moment, Liverpool Bay to Yorkshire, south of that line, exceptionally strong winds, up to 100 miles an hour in some places, generally 50, 60, with gusts to 70. I Amen. Mean, these are incredibly strong winds. The yeah. area is going to receive them and the really big population tomorrow. So we really have to watch out. Right, from dawn, you say there, and, and you're absolutely right. I mean, I know extremes of 100, but even, you know, stuff at 60, 50 miles an hour, enough to cause a lot of damage and a risk to uh, human life there. But you, you were saying um, that, that it could come as far as southern England. Where, where do you mean by that? I'm just trying to get an idea. We're talking about um, Scotland. We're talking about the north of England. You say it could come in over Liverpool Bay. Um, then how far will everybody be affected, basically, to some degree? Everyone, everyone, everyone's going to be affected, Eamon. Now, the, the centre of the low is going to cross Liverpool Bay, it looks like, in the morning, going across to Yorkshire. Everywhere south of that line will have exceptionally strong winds, I say in the Midlands and right down to the south, winds up to 80 miles an hour. Above that line, we're going to have a some snow falling because it's going to be very, very cold air and there'll be some snow falling above that line. So it's going to be really exceptional indeed. I would imagine then if, as we get further south and you get to places like Dorset, Somerset, Devon, Cornwall, they're going to get really, really heavy seas as well, aren't they, with these winds coming in? Absolutely, Angela. We're going to have mountainous seas in the southern England tomorrow. If you're talking about winds of 90 to 100 miles an hour, uh, going on a boat tomorrow will be will not be advisable. The winds could be 10 metres high, though the waves, incredible seas. I'm trying to get across the point that Eunice is a much more powerful storm than Dudley is going to be. One of the storms of the century, uh, in, in where I live in the Midlands, we had one in January 76 at winds at 100 miles an hour. That's going to be very much like tomorrow and not unlike the great storm of 87, but affecting a wider area, not quite as intense as that. But we're talking about one of the top five gales of the century if this comes off. So really trying to get to the point to people, do not go out tomorrow. Stay in, ride out the storm. It's one of those weather systems where we think, yes, we've got to change our plans. We need to keep safe. We need to keep indoors. This storm is really dangerous. You're painting a really, really dramatic picture there. Well, if it is one of the storms of the century, exactly. there's no dodge in it. And I think, Phil, I'm glad you're painting that picture because so often we get forecasts without the uh, urgency attached to it because, you know, driving is going to be a problem. Travelling by train is going to be a problem. Falling trees, as you can see there, absolutely horrendous. Seas that we've talked about, airplane uh, trips uh, as well. I mean, uh, there'd be a lot of disruption to airline timetables. And, you know, for one day only, because you're talking about coming in at dawn tomorrow, how long will it hang yeah. around for? I mean, uh, will, is this basically you saying to people, stay in tomorrow and tomorrow night, or will this last the weekend? She's going to come in, say, dawn tomorrow across Ireland. By lunchtime, the centre of the low is going to be based over probably Lancashire, Yorkshire, and in the afternoon, it's going to move out into the North Sea. So we're talking about during the day. That's another problem, Eamon, is that 
the strongest of the winds are going to occur in the right in the middle of the day. Now, regrettably, when the Burns Day storm came on a very similar timetable in 1990, 50 people were killed by the storm by flying debris, trees. So, uh, as I say, people really got to keep out of the way of this storm. Lots of dangers of flying debris. It's a working day. A lot of children are still at school. I am very concerned as an amateur meteorologist and a weather enthusiast, as all my professional colleagues, about the power and strength of this storm. And the people have really got to get into the heads that this is really different and it could cause a lot of trouble and a lot of problem and to try and keep her out of its way. Sometimes, okay. as you say, you get forecasts of whether it's going to happen in a couple of weeks' time. This is happening tomorrow. Met Office forecasts are already amber aiming. They could well today go red when they get pinned down the actual track of this storm, where it's going to go. Warnings could go to red which is a danger to life, what, what this storm can actually bring. So I can't underestimate it enough. Keep no, out get, of its way. We get the uh, message uh, <laughs> loud and clear. We've got your message. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. And, you know, I'll certainly act on that. I was due to go out um, tomorrow and I don't think I'll bother now. Strong message there. You couldn't, you couldn't get it more clear, could you? you could Stay at home. It's going to be a big one. Let me ask you this. Have you ever during a storm heard or seen a tree fall I ask you because I have, and it's the scariest thing. It's the noise. It's like an explosion, isn't noise. it? Yeah, it's, it's like the, a bomb going the off. The only other time I heard a noise similar was uh, watching an iceberg crack uh, in the Arctic, and uh, which was a noise I'd mm. never heard before, but a tree cracking during a storm. It's the, it's the noise. And it's sad, because the tree is probably, if it makes that amount of noise, very old. Very old, yeah. like us, Angela. I know, like I know. We could be, if we were in a forest now, you... I know, we'd, yeah. be, we'd be a couple of bombs so, going off, wouldn't we? Swaying from side to side. Uh, look, <laughs> oh, stay safe. That is so depressing. <laughs> <laughs>